Hi students and teachers. I'm so happy to be with you again today. Uh, I forgot to mention last week that I have some awesome artwork behind me from Miss Gentlin's class. So thank you to those students. I will continue to keep it up this week as well. Uh, we have been talking about the ministry of Jesus for about a month now. Uh, we looked at his baptism, then when he rounded up his disciples. We talked about how he would teach his followers through stories called parables. And then last week we looked at many of the miracles that Jesus performed. Today we're going to discuss prayer. During his years of ministry here on earth, Jesus prayed. So we're going to look at when he prayed, why he prayed, what he prayed, and we're going to talk about what Jesus taught his people about prayer in the four Gospels. Now, I don't know how often you say prayers to God. It may be a part of your bedtime routine, perhaps. You may even kneel down by your bed when you do it. But when you pray, you might be thanking God for good things that have happened that day. You may have special people in your life that you ask God to take care of, especially if someone you love is sick or hurt. You might be looking ahead at what's to come in the next days and wanting God to help you with those things, like if you have a big test coming up that you're worried about. You might not realize this, but many of the things we do today when it comes to prayer are because of Jesus. He modeled good prayer habits for us. Let's watch a video that's going to show us a little bit more about that. During Jesus' time on earth, he prayed a lot. He knew that prayer would keep him close to God, his Father. Sometimes Jesus would pray with others, like when he asked Peter, James, and John to come with him to a mountain to pray. Other times, Jesus would leave his disciples and pray by himself so he would have time alone with his Father. When Jesus prayed, he prayed for all sorts of things. He prayed for his disciples, for those in need of healing, and for little children. Jesus even prayed for us and asked his Father to watch over us. That's right. Jesus prayed for you and for me. Through Jesus' prayers, we can learn how to pray too. Jesus used the Lord's Prayer to teach His disciples to pray. It wasn't long and fancy. He showed them that they could pray in a simple way about many different things. Our prayers can be the same way. Jesus also taught us that we should pray without giving up. God is always listening to what we say. The way He answers our prayers might be different from what we expect, but we can always trust His plan for us. So the next time you're happy or sad, or worried or angry, or just need help, talk to God about it. He listened to His Son's prayers, and He'll listen to yours too. There are so many great things in that video clip. Jesus prayed to stay close to God. He prayed for all sorts of things, including you and me. Isn't that amazing? I'd like to focus next on how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. The video we just watched said he used the Lord's Prayer to show them an example. It was a simple way to pray, and it covered many different topics. Let's talk about it. Many of you probably have it memorized. There are a few different ways to say it, but the way I like to hear it the most is from the mouths of children. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 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 Right from the start, we see Jesus completely changing the way people prayed back then. Encouraging them to start this prayer with our Father, would have been very different from how they normally prayed. Nobody called God their father. They would have used a much more formal term. The Aramaic word for father here is Abba, which is actually more like saying daddy. This transformed their perception of God from being this distant, powerful ruler 
to being a tender and compassionate parent. So let's go through the prayer line by line just to make sure that you understand what's going on. First of all, our Father which art in heaven or who art in heaven. This is just a fancy way of saying who is in heaven. God, our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means holy or honored. So this is like saying, God, your name is holy or God, we honor you. Basically letting God know that we think he is special. Thy kingdom come. Thy is just a word for your. So your kingdom come means that we would want to see God's kingdom become a bigger part of this world. For more of God's work to be done through us. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will is basically what you want. So God's will is what we want. This is like saying, God, we want what you want. And sometimes this may be serving more as a reminder to us, as in don't forget to want what God wants. So God, help us want your will to be done and help us to do that will. Give us this day our daily bread. Now we're not just talking about actual bread here, uh, but rather all foods or even all the things that we need to survive. We're asking God to please provide everything that we need. Now you may say the next line different depending on which church you go to. Forgive us our debts or forgive us our trespasses or sins as we forgive our debtors or as we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. But however you say it, this one is about the things we do that we shouldn't do. And it's about the things other people do to us that they shouldn't do. We ask God's forgiveness for the bad things we've done, and we ask that God helps us forgive others for the bad things they've done. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This goes along with the stuff about forgiveness. We're looking ahead to the things that might happen next. So we want God's help in keeping on the right path, directing us away from the bad things and toward the good things. That word deliver is kind of like when we get a pizza delivered to the house. It's being carried by someone to us. So it's like we're saying, God, carry us away from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thine is just another fancy word for yours. So God, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Glory is like saying awesomeness. Uh, so it's like we're closing this prayer by praising God and telling him how much we appreciate him. Now we're used to saying amen or amen at the end of a prayer. But do you know what amen really means? It's kind of like saying, so be it, or it is so. Or if any of you watch The Mandalorian, it's kind of like saying, this is the way. Or maybe even, I have spoken. Having said all of this, I'd also like to show you how the Jesus Storybook Bible interprets the Lord's Prayer, because their words are very good. I love their version. Here it is. Hello, Daddy. We want to know you and be close to you. Please show us how. Make everything in the world right again, and in our hearts too. Do what is best, just like you do in heaven. And please do it down here too. Please give us everything we need today, and forgive us for doing wrong, for hurting you. Forgive us just as we forgive other people when they hurt us. Rescue us. We need you. We don't want to keep running away and hiding from you. Keep us safe from our enemies. You're strong, God. You can do whatever you want. You are in charge. Now and forever and for always. We think you're great. Amen. Yes, we do. So that's the Lord's Prayer. There's a lot going on in that prayer, but there's also some very important parts going on right before and after it. So hear this passage from Matthew 7, taken from the message paraphrase. 
When you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense His grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are really prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. In prayer, there is a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. I love all of this from the message. Uh, Jesus is getting people back on track. I love how he shows a connection between what God does and what we do. So yes, pray that God forgives your sins, but remember that you're also to forgive those who sin against you. You have a part to play in the process. Back then, there was a tendency to pray in front of people and to do it in a real fancy way so they would be really impressed. Jesus declared that God didn't want that. He wanted simple. He wanted honest. There's a great parable Jesus told about this. Two men are praying. One is a proud Pharisee. The other is a humble tax collector. Typically, the people would have praised the Pharisee and looked down on the tax collector. Jesus, of course, encourages them to see things a little differently. Check it out. One day, Jesus told this story to some people who thought they were very good and looked down on everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. Tax collectors were hated by many people. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not bad like other people, cheaters and sinners. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Ha <laughs> ha! I fast and give up eating food twice a week, and I give you a tenth of everything I earn. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest because he was so sad, saying, God, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. Then Jesus said, I tell you, when the tax collector went home, he was right with God, but the Pharisee was not right with God. Everyone who makes himself great will be made humble, but everyone who makes himself humble will be made great. What a great example of Jesus getting to the heart of the matter, showing the people what really matters to God. He wants us to be real, not fake, to be humble, not showy, to acknowledge our sinfulness rather than try to proclaim how awesome we are. There are many, many passages in the Gospels about Jesus going off by himself to pray, sometimes even staying there alone through the night. One of my favorite prayers of Jesus was when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane right before they came to arrest him and later crucify him. This prayer will be the focus of a different lesson in a few months, so we'll cover it then. But these examples of Jesus seeking solitude show us how important it is to eliminate distractions when we pray. This way we can place all our focus on our conversation with God. Prayer not only helps in our relationship with God, but it also helps in our relationship with each other. When we make prayer a regular part of our daily lives, it helps us to remember to pray for each other's needs. And when we're praying for other people, those that we know and love, as well as those we don't know, maybe even people from around the world, 
This has the power to change the way we live. If you're praying for God to help other people, maybe you're also thinking about how God can use you to help those people as well. Prayer is certainly about asking for God's help, but it's also about asking God how we can help carry out His will here on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to close with a special song about prayer. It's not going to be me singing, it's going to be a video. I encourage you to listen and maybe even sing along once you get a little familiar with it. Uh, I know she repeats it at least once. I hope you all take some time to pray today and every day just like Jesus did. I'll see you all next week.